Let's try again to delete this ACL. And the reason I really like showing you this particular issue that we're running into is that the vast majority of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, you just put no in front of a command or an access list or something like that, and you're gonna be able to delete it. And what we've actually got to do here is go into the mode, which in this case was standard, and then block 11, and then put a no in front of it. And there you go. So just got to watch the syntax there a little bit. You don't actually drop down into the configuration mode, just no IP access list, and then you do have to put standard or extended again and we got rid of block 11. So we'll just make absolutely sure that that worked. And it did because we don't have any access lists. So let's configure one that's gonna do the job for us. IP access list. Let's just look at that iOS help again. And we'll call it block 11. We shouldn't have any trouble this time, and we don't. And notice that the prompt is even config ext and ACL, letting us know that we are indeed working on an extended NACL. So I want to deny, and I'm going to go with IP here, and then I want to deny 3330. There's my wildcard mask. We know that one by heart. But now I want to set up my destination, and that is 111110, and then 000255. And believe it or not, we actually have some options at the end of all this, at least one of which we're going to see in action in this section, but we're going to leave it alone for right now. And let me ask you this, exactly what is the line I need right here to negate the implicit deny? What do I need? Permit is the easy part. <laughs> Permit, IP, any, any. You got to have it twice. Not seeing double, the first any is for the source, the second any is for the destination. So we're looking good there. Now let me run a show IP access list. And there's our extended IP access list. We see the two lines in the order we put them in. And everything looks good. So now let's go ahead and apply it. Because it doesn't do you much good if you don't apply it. And the command is still IP access group for application to an interface. You've got to put the name now and in or out. And we are filtering inbound packets on that. And that should do it. So let's go over to router three and start sending some of our pings. We'll do first one that we expect to go through. And we're looking good. And as we expect, when traffic is being blocked by an ACL, the return we expect is u.u.u. So anytime you see that, you know there's a downstream issue. And the downstream issue, of course, here is not really an issue. It's what we wanted to have happen. So we've got the network going through that we expect to go through. We have the pings go not going through that we expect to be blocked. And now let's go ahead and go up to router 1. Cover your eyes if you don't like the number one, because it's coming up. <laughs> now, do we need to do anything to the access list? That question sounds familiar. We really shouldn't have to, because the one network we wanted to block access to was network 11, and we said it should uh, be able to ping or route network three should be able to have access to any networks we had in the future, and we just did. So let's go over to three, and we'll do a ping. And we gotta change that source. And it goes right through. So our extended NACL is a success. Let's go ahead and run show IP access list here. And I have a little control traffic here. I also have a routing protocol running um, which may account for a denial, but actually it looks good because you can see what happened here uh, with our deny statement. You see five matches at the end. Well, where did they come from? The five packets that were denied by our ACL a moment ago, and I did not have that routing protocol on. I apologize. We did the default static routes. My fault. And there, the second line, you can see 10 matches, and five of those matches would have been when we pinged 1111, and the other five would have been when we pinged network 111. I want to show you a command people really tend to forget about. And it's a really handy little command as far as your ACLs and where they're applied 
and the direction in which they are applied. Because show IP access list is important. Show access list, we know that's going to give you the same information, but it doesn't tell you where you've applied it, if you've applied it, and what direction it's been applied in. But I'll show you a command that does. Show IP interface. And if I run that by itself, it's going to show you a ton of information about every interface on the router. I don't really want that. I want to filter it down. So I'm going to do a show interface 010. That's the interface we're on. And you can see from top to bottom, first it gives you, you know, your physical and logical states of the interface, gives you your IP address, uh, some, I don't want to say miscellaneous, but information we're not really looking at right now. But right here, outgoing access list is not set. Inbound access list is block 11. And remember, we can see an outgoing list and an inbound list for the same interface. That is perfectly legal. You can have one ACL matching on traffic that's coming in and another separate ACL on traffic that's going out. Technically, you can use the same ACL for inbound and outbound traffic, but it's very, very rare, if ever, that you're going to do that. So that concludes our look at the named ACLs. We've got some more ACL goodness coming up right next on the next video.